Uh, Douglas, let's start um, with what's going on over there with you, and then we'll come to this migration story. Uh, a big day tomorrow in this war, a pause, the release of 13 hostages, we believe women and children. Um, what is the feeling about this? You know, many people are saying from a distance uh, that this looks like uh, a sort of slow form of water torture for these poor families. Drip, drip, drip of people being let out. No one knows who it is until the last minute and so on. Agony for these families. Yes, it's, uh, it's an agonising time in Israel. Um, everybody in Israel would like to see the people who were kidnapped on the 7th of October return to their families, uh, what remains of their families in many cases. Um, and it's absolutely agonising. Uh, last night I was with many of the families in Tel Aviv as we were waiting to hear the news of what was meant to be a, an exchange, a handover of some of the kidnapped people uh, this morning. That then didn't uh, happen we're now waiting for it to happen tomorrow morning. We don't know for certain it'll happen. We thought it would happen today. Now it's meant to be tomorrow. Um, it's agonizing for the families. One mother uh, this evening discovered that her two children are not on the list that has been given out uh, to some families, telling them that their loved ones are going to be in the release tomorrow. And, of course, there are many families. One I was speaking with earlier, their son is 21, he was at the rave and was abducted by Hamas, stolen with three of his friends. He's 21. Uh, it's only people under the age of 18 that are being focused on at the moment. But many of the families feel, you know, they want them all home. And uh, the problem, of course, that Israel is now in is a problem that Israelis know very well, which is the completely unfair exchange of uh, of the hostages. The um, Israeli government is talking about releasing three Palestinian prisoners, that is, people who have, for instance, been sent to prison in Israel for carrying out terrorist offences, uh, releasing three of these people for every one child uh, that Hamas are going to release. And there's an added kick to this. Uh, Sirwan, the head of Hamas in Gaza, who w was the person who planned and led the operation on the 7th of October that killed 1,400 Israelis and led to these Israelis being kidnapped, is a man who was himself released in just such a prisoner swap 10 years ago. That was when Israel released more than 1,000 people from Israeli prisons, Palestinians from Israeli prisons, and returned them for a single soldier, Gilad Shalit, who Israel, of course, wanted back. Uh, so there's a horrible kicker to all of this, mm. a horrible kicker that we've seen this before, these exchanges. The people being released by Israel are people who stabbed people in the streets, carried out brutal terrorist attacks. They're being returned for children. Douglas, is there any doubt that when this hostage release few days is over, that Israel will go back to attacking Gaza to get at Hamas. Uh, there are some people who hope that perhaps if this goes successfully over the next few days, that it may lead to a more permanent ceasefire. But is there any appetite for that, do you think, in the Netanyahu government? Well, it, it really is a very, very serious conundrum, this, because Hamas is carrying out what you accurate, accurately describe as water torture of the Israelis. It can drip out small numbers of the abducted Israelis, uh, and it knows that, for them, these are golden eggs. Uh, they know how much Israel uh, cares about every citizen who was stolen from their families. They know how much they care. They know how much they can drag out international uh, uh, pressure on Israel to have a ceasefire. They know that they can keep on promising releases and then let down the families again and again. Uh, the problem that Israel has is that Benjamin Netanyahu says that he wants to destroy Hamas. Most Israelis feel, I think, understandably, they cannot live with Hamas. Uh, and yet, of course, as long as Hamas has some hostages, has the people who've been kidnapped, it can try to stop operations going on in the Gaza to destroy Hamas. It's an incredibly ugly equation. But it's one that Hamas has performed before, as has Islamic Jihad and other terror groups in the Gaza. Uh, they are playing a game not just regionally but internationally. And, uh, of course, the people who are suffering most are the families 
who have their loved ones um, in what state we don't know. A small number once again promised to be returned tomorrow. Again, what state they'll be in, we do not know. Mm. Um, but yes, it's torture for the families. I'm going to be talking to uh, Norman Finkelstein in, in a few minutes. Uh, you've got strong opinions about him. I, I know you're going to stay and just listen to that interview and then react to that after, which I appreciate. Just before I go to the pack, just very quickly, if you don't mind, your reaction to these migration figures in the UK. Massively higher net migration last year than we've been led to believe. Very high again this year. This all from a Conservative government that promised to take back control of the borders and reduce net migration to tens of thousands? Well, obviously, it's a political failure, uh, a generational political failure uh, that's just sped up in recent years. That, that it has happened, as you said, under consecutive leaders who promised that exactly this wouldn't happen is a disaster for Britain. Quite what a disaster it is, I think we can already start to see. Uh, I remember when Giorgio Maloney was described as this far-out, far-right political leader in Italy, and she's now Prime Minister. I remember when Gert Wilders was described as this far-out, far-right political figure who wasn't even allowed into Britain in 2009 by a Labour Home Secretary. And now he's the main party leader in the Netherlands. So if anyone thinks that all of this just glides by endlessly without any political consequence, I'd just say, raise your eyes a little, and look to the continent. Yeah, completely agree. Douglas, I'll talk to you a little later. Thank you very much. Yeah, Paul, I mean, this is... There's a hard reality here. Yes. This migrant problem is not going away. It's getting worse. There are more and more people now coming across the continent trying to find somewhere to go. Um, and you're seeing a, a rise of very right-wing populist leaders now winning elections as voters say, you know what, we need someone to do something about this. Which is why we always have to be careful with the language that we use. Right. So you started with the word the problem. Mm. There isn't a problem. We actually haven't... You don't think in, we, we increasing population is a problem with the state of our NHS? Our I, I had an experience of the NHS recently, right, with a family member. And it was horrific. Partly horrific and partly great. The horrific part was an A&E. Have you been to an A&E in an NHS hospital recently? I have. It I is, have. It is I've like got three a, children, Piers. It's like a war zone, right? Yeah. And you've got people who've just had heart attacks being left on trolleys in mm. corridors for six, seven hours. I know, because... I know who it was, right? Mm. And then you get good treatment once you get through that system. But can we take millions more people in this country? Genuine question. As so, long as I don't, as long as I've got any objection to any individual, can we sustain that pressure on our already creaking public services? The reason why... So there's two different questions there. It's our creaking public services and can we take more people? Mm. The answer is we need more people. The second answer to creaking public services is we need more people because our public services are creaking. Our government, in the last 13 years, has failed to protect our public services. I think, our I think government, can I, can I, it's but really important to point out... Well, finish, it's okay. really important to point out, because I am also worried, as Douglas Murray says, about the rise of the right. And what is happening is, is that we're not being told the truth about immigration. We need more people to come into this country. Our net population is only rising at 200,000 on average over the last three years. That's it, 200,000. Okay. That's, 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 that's twice the and, population of Solid. And what we are not being told is why we are unable to cope with the fact that we've got no housing, why the fact that the NHS is crumbling, mm. why the fact that we are going to food banks, why the fact mm. that we, our schools are crumbling. That is what we need okay. to look at. Esther? Uh, th the thing is, over 50% of those people, those figures that you've just quoted of the 750,000, they're dependents. So they're dependents of people coming in legally, so workers that have come in. So we're talking women and children mainly who rely on the NHS, mm. education, all of these things. At the end of the day, we have to admit Britain that has... That seems to be a big part of but, the but, problem. But, but that's, that's the issue. Which is not the actual skilled workers that we need, which I yeah. think we totally can all agree mm. on that. It's the number of people that come with them, yeah. right? Family dependence is actually a very large number of people. The thing is, I, I, I understand your point that we need these skilled workers, but mm. at the end of the day, they are not coming mm. without families and dependents who rely on our public services. But also, we have to have a conversation about what Britain is willing to give up in exchange for slowing this migration. We, the reason why the Conservatives haven't tackled this issue is because big business likes mass migration. Absolutely. It has a downward effect on, on wages, so it keeps wages minimally low. We look at GDP figures and we somehow resemble a dynamic and growing and strong economy when that's not the case. We live in a low-wage, low-productivity economy, and that's the bigger issue. At the end of the day, under the, the Labour government of the last... Um, over 13 years of a Labour government, 3.5 million people were allowed in in this country, and that was scandalous, you know? Mm. Labour yeah. is out of control. 
about what one million people in just two years yes of of, of tory leadership and and so that, that is that is scandalous that's so, horrifying no no it no. is it it's is not horrifying. it's not scandalous it's, it's not it's, horrifying it's, it's what is required it's, completely unsustainable. it's what is needed it's not what's needed and, and I'm let sorry. me and let me explain to you why if we do not continue to open our door to healthy young people who are going to be able to work Where are they going to live? as an aging population. Where are ask they going our to government. Live? Ask, right, don't ask me. Ask Here's what I would say. We're an aging Paula, population. Paula, if that's true, we need you, say, who, you say who causes the problem. David Cameron said we're down to tens of thousands. That's completely right? unrealistic. That's why the public believe there's a problem. Yes. Because they hear the Prime Minister say that yes. and now they're seeing nearly a million people come in last which year. Which is where actually... That's not tens of thousands. Which is where I actually agree with Douglas Murray. And I've said many times before, this focus on the small boats was okay. just... A, it was a smoke screen. At well, I think there are two different issues. To trick, to I, think, trick I think illegal immigration on the small boats has got to be better controlled. It, it clearly is, a, apart from anything else, is an insult to all those who are going through the system legally. Yeah. Uh, but secondly, I, you know, I just don't think you can have successive prime ministers say, this is a big problem, this net migration. We're going to get it under 100,000, get it down to tens of thousands. And then you see figures like today, where last year alone, 750,000. Yeah. But Piers, immigrants have always been blamed for the ills in society. I'm not blaming, I'm not blaming immigrants. immigrants. I'm not We're saying, saying you are. What I'm saying control. is, well, I, I don't think it is. It is out of control. I don't think it is. It is. And I think it will increase, and because it needs to increase. It's out of, okay, it's out of control by the yardstick set by successive prime ministers who said yes. we have to get it under, under I agree with tens you. of thousands. Failed the moment language. you say that repeatedly, yes. and then you get these numbers, it looks like it's out of control. Yes. And my experience, I've got to say, of NHS recently, showed me we have big problems with creaking public services. Got to leave it there. Thank you both very much indeed.